let's look at question number 23 now this is a quite an interesting question consider the following statements statement number 1 Carbon markets are likely to be one of the most widespread tools in the fight against climate change. Carbon markets transfer resources from private sector to the state. Which one of the following is correct in respect of the above statements? Now, this uh, kind of assertion reasoning type of questions have been very common in the previous year UPSC exams. This time we have noticed a higher in, an increase in the number of such questions. But this gives you an idea that what is the kind of pattern that UPSC is focusing on. And from now onwards, we have to make sure that we learn things based on the facts. We have to remember some of the facts. And also we have to understand the interrelatability of the facts so that we are able to answer these kind of questions. Although in terms of topics, this question is not a surprise. Questions on climate change mitigation strategies, carbon market is something which was highly anticipated and a question like this is something very much important as well. So, carbon markets are likely to be one of the most widespread tools in the fight against climate change. Yes, that is true. No doubt about it. Yes, carbon markets are considered as the future. India already has a good reserve of carbon credits lying at its disposal. There are a lot of organizations in India also that possess carbon credits. And these carbon credits, if you guys understand the idea of carbon mitigation strategies, since Kyoto Protocol, they have been a tool to incentivize those who are reducing the carbon footprints. And they are also a tool to penalize those who are releasing more carbon emissions or carbon footprints. So yes, carbon market, carbon trading is a very important tool and can effectively help in mitigating climate change strategies. I hope all of you are also aware of the INDCs, the nationally determined contributions which have been which have been realized by so far 153 countries have been able to realize them and they have already made uh, they have already made uh, the objective of reducing their own carbon footprint by 2030. So carbon trading or carbon market is considered as an effective tool also to help the countries achieve their nationally determined contributions, which are basically individual contribution that countries are going to make to achieve the overall goal of Paris Agreement. Now, the second statement says carbon markets transfer the resources from private sector to the state. Now, this particular statement seems a little debatable. But if you take the reference, if you take the reference of the Paris Agreement, Article 6, Paragraph 4, if you see, take the reference of Article 6 and Paragraph 4, you guys would notice that under the Paris Agreement, it gives the power to the state, it gives the power to the, to the, uh, you know, to the concerned authorities to start regulating the carbon market, right? See, I hope you understand carbon trading is based on an idea where a country, where an organization, a country or a person can be incentivized for reducing their emissions, can be incentivized of you know, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, coming up with technologies that can capture the excessive carbon, right? But this incentive becomes meaningless if the cost of the end carbon credit is bare minimal. So the cost of the end carbon credits, if we are able to put a fixed cap on it, like what India has been asking in all the COPs so far, all the climate change summits so far, that there should be a cap on all the carbon footprints, all the carbon credits that are there and a price cap so that the price fluctuation does not affect the carbon trading and in this way it can be a very motivating enabler so that private sectors and also the all government authorities can start reducing their carbon footprint in order to earn a substantive incentive in the form of carbon credits now in order to regulate such a market in order to regulate such a market regulate the market of carbon credits we have to ensure that the entire market capitalization the entire uh, price uh, uh, price band allocation it is under the control of the state only then the private sector as well as the government sector can work in in uh, in tandem and overall realize the overall goal of achieving net zero carbon emissions remember carbon trading or carbon market today is a tool to promote um, uh, promote the reductions of greenhouse gas emissions to reduce to discourage uh, wherever there is excessive greenhouse gas emissions but as and when these strategies start becoming successful, as and when more and more initiatives are taken up to reduce the greenhouse gases, to capture all the greenhouse gases which are already there, the entire carbon mar market will eventually attain a level of saturation. So this market has to be regulated by the state. It has to be under the control of the state. Only then we can realize the end objective of our NDCs. 
so considering this it seems that statement one is absolutely correct and in order to achieve the objective against mitigating climate change the carbon markets has to transfer the resources from private sector to the state right so according to the two statements here it seems that both statement 1 and 2 are correct and statement 2 looks like a correct explanation for the statement 1 so for this question the answer should be option a i hope you guys are able to understand